Today I fucked up by telling girl I had small penis before I got anything. So it all started on a date to the movies at a pretty local area. Everything was going well, we made out in the theater, had some good laughs enjoyed food and genuinely had a good time. As good as a date to the movies could go. I could tell she liked me a lot cause she kept getting close to me and we had some pretty deep conversations for a first date. I'd been talking to the girl on the phone for about a week before. But she seemed to feel comfortable around me so I was pretty happy to have someone who I could connect to. We made out a couple more times behind some buildings and on benches and stuff and kept talking, holding hands, felt like we'd been dating for months but it was still a first date. We met through some of our mutual friends that we originally went on the date with but separated after the movie. It was pretty dark and we were walking on a pretty unpopulated path behind the theater slash mall. He took my hand to an alley slash bushy area not visible to the main road. She looked at me in the eyes kissed me and said can I go down? I said yes. But I'm not gonna lie it's not that big, like at all I know I face palmed instantly. She said oh well, maybe it's not time then? She got back up and said sorry I asked. I didn't say anything cause I was just freaking the fuck out. The entire date from there was awkward and I could have easily just said no it's fine but I didn't. Today is a regretful day ladies and gentlemen. Regretful day indeed. Too long didn't read, was about to get head from a girl, told her my dick was smaller and she didn't really wanna do it anymore. Crying face. Edit, thanks everyone for all the hilarious comments and confidence advice. I didn't expect to blow up as now everyone knows I have a small dick, smiley face. Bad news, I texted her the next day and she hasn't responded yet. I hope we didn't lose her, disappointed face, edit, this blew up even more. And I got some gold and plat. Love you all. A lot of people admitting they have small dicks, smiley face. Update, she did respond to my texts a day later saying she had fun but she wasn't sure if she was ready for a relationship. Think my mistake has caused a failed relationship. When we were on the date she was very happy and seemed like she wanted to go further too. F in the chat please, disappointed face. I once said prepare to me mildly disappointed. With finger guns. Don't regret it at all. So, no head? Something I learned, probably from here, is that you should never apologize for a small penis, reaching climax early etc. It just makes the overall experience much more enjoyable for both parts and less awkward. I might be in the minority but if a guy finishes too soon I always take it as a compliment. I think it's really cute when guys get embarrassed about it because it doesn't bother me at all. I agree with those saying she misunderstood and thought you were saying you couldn't get it up. But who uses big instead of hard? At least in English. No one ever said do baby, you're making my dick so big. I'm so big for you right now. So much stuff like this happens because people assume the worst. It's a shame. As a woman, I think she misunderstood you. Ask her out again. The rest of your date was good. Also, don't comment on your penis size. Here's why, one in general, too big is more of an issue than small. Do you are going to make a girl evaluate something she probably wouldn't have. Three size matters most if you don't know what you're doing. So, if you've got some good moves, know how to use your hands and tongue well to please a woman, you're set. A slash bro girl. Today I fucked up by drinking an energy drink and almost dying. This very recently. It was my day off, and I usually start my morning by drinking an energy drink and playing some video games. So I popped open a monster drink and sat down to play. About 20 minutes later, I started feeling very anxious for no reason. Then all of a sudden, my chest started pounding really hard for no reason. I've had panic attacks before. But this was different, it felt like my heart was pounding, at a rhythm it wasn't supposed to. This scared the crap out of me and I thought I might be having an attack or something. I tried breathing slowly, but it wouldn't stop. So I drove myself to the hospital. I know that was really stupid, but understand that by this point I wasn't thinking straight, my brain was losing oxygen and I was in a delirious panic. Dot. Upon arriving at the ER, I checked in and they immediately rushed me back to a bed. And this is when it got really scary. I couldn't really understand what was happening, but I knew I was losing feeling in my limbs and my vision was going dark while nurses crowded around me, and they told me they needed to stop my 
my heart. I cried out terrified, saying I didn't want to die. I woke up a little while later with a tube in my arm in the same room. Doctor had explained to me that I had a severe supraventricular tachycardia, or in other words, my heart had been beating irregularly and in excess of 230 BPM. At that fast of a rate, the blood doesn't have enough time to absorb oxygen, hence the delirium and loss of feeling. So they tried to chemically halt my heart, but that didn't work, so they had to use a cardioversion machine to stop and restart it. After talking to the doctor about my diet and personal habits, he summarized that I had been malnourished to the point of having very unbalanced electrolyte levels. Electrolytes are basically what allows your nervous system to control your motor function, and having poor electrolyte levels and introducing a strong stimulant made my heart go crazy. I haven't touched energy drinks since, and I try really hard to have a balanced diet now. Too long didn't read, poor diet and energy drink consumption made my heart go crazy almost killing me. Electrolytes are important kids. Edit, holy shit, I was just trying to share a scary experience. I had no idea this post would blow up so much. Um, thanks I guess, I don't know what to say. I agree with those of you saying it wasn't strictly the energy drink that caused this, it was mostly my bad diet depriving me of potassium and phosphates specifically. But the energy drink is the match that lit the tinder I laid out. Some are telling me this event is rarely life threatening. That may be true, but I will say that some may be confusing what I wrote about with a superatrial tachycardia, which is far less serious than a ventricular tachycardia, which is serious enough that I am not allowed to donate blood or plasma due to me being permanently labeled a safety risk. This isn't from my knowledge, this is from several doctors who told me so. I appreciate the well wishes and the concern, I am eating a balanced diet, I exercise daily, and I only have the occasional coffee or tea now, I do not wish to repeat that stupid mistake. Edit again. A lot of people have been asking what my diet was like before this happened. It wasn't so much to do with what I was eating, but that I wasn't eating enough, I work very long hours and I usually only spared myself the time to have one good meal a day, usually something my wife cooked at home. The doctor said that because I wasn't eating frequently enough my body wasn't able to build up enough potassium and phosphorus to keep my system stable. The long periods of fasting coupled with long strenuous hours of working severely depleted my electrolytes. So the lesson is that you should not only eat a balanced diet, but also eat regularly. Edit X3, first time Reddit Gold. Thank you kind stranger. All I had to do was nearly kill myself from shitty habits. Eat decently and drink water. It's so easy to get into bad habits until they catch up with you. It's astonishing how something as simple as that has become a complex issue requiring professional help from nutritionists and stuff. OP, Doc, my heart isn't working correctly. Doc, have you tried to turn it off and on again? Nurse here. A couple weeks ago we pushed the chemical used to restart a heart for the first time I'd seen it. It was awesome to see work, but scary as shit for the patient. We hook them up to a defibrillator and monitor in case shit goes south. You see the heart rate go from 160 to 170 to just a flat line. Everyone holds their breath and the patient literally feels like they are dying and their eyes get huge and they just look terrified. Then beep, 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 it comes back. It was awesome. But adenosine can be scary shit. What you're telling me they're awake for that? Watch your health kiddies or your heart will fucking explode. All these comments about the lesson to be learned here. Good thing I can ignore them. I know my heart would never dare attack me. I'm just that intimidating. Today I fucked up by misunderstanding a job proposal and quitting my current job as a permanent employee. So, this actually happened two days ago and it's still developing. I am working at a company where I feel completely miserable, and that pays barely enough to pay rent and survive, and been here for three long years. Anxiety attacks, depression, and the complete lack of hope into having a life where I don't have to struggle and skip meals to be able to pay my bills started to accumulate and boosted me to start sending CVs everywhere. The thing was that no one was calling even after months and months of applications. The paranoia starts and I slowly start to convince myself that my portfolio sucks, 
that I'm horrible at what I do, that I'll be stuck in this job forever, etc, etc. A few months go by, and a friend of a friend knew what I did, and asked if I was interested in an interview at her company because they had a job position opening up. I say yes of course, send my CV and portfolio. They answer back saying they loved my work and want to meet me personally for an interview. The interview itself went perfectly. I never felt so comfortable talking to someone in English, not my native language, and neither the native language of the guy that interviews me, and in the end, the guy basically says, and I quote word by word, for me, it's a yes, now it's up to you if you want to accept this position. Of course I said yes, the job seems amazing, the pay is more than double of what I am currently making, it was way closer to home, everything is perfect. Before saying goodbye I asked him to send me by email the formal proposal just to be sure, he says, sure, I'll send it to you today or tomorrow, and I go back to work. The next day, and here's the fuck up. I give the notice to my boss before receiving the proposal in fear of not be able to start when need, telling that I got an awesome job proposal, but that I need to start in less than a week and half. Everything is being arranged where I work as I write this, I've handed my resignation letter, talked to the company owner and everything. What I did not consider, is that I had to give at least 60 days of notice since I am a permanent employee, and while I'm writing this, the HR department is to call me and tell how they will settle this up, in other words, how much money am I going to have to pay or not make. The rest of the day of the interview goes by, and nothing on the proposal. The next day I email them, sending all my informations, and asking for the proposal, and they say that the dude that interviewed me is going to contact me. So today he messages me, hey man told me that you are available at the combined date, but remember, we are still to make a decision, did you tell your office that you are leaving? And I say that yes, of course, I legally had to, especially to start the day that you mentioned. And he just responds with a no. I don't know if I misunderstood something he said, or if he forgot to say something to me, but he always seemed assertive that I was going to be hired, since they weren't really interviewing anyone. Also, take in consideration that the interview was really informal. I asked if they when were they going to make the decision, and he said today, so I guess I'll update in a few hours if I'm unemployed and potently homeless, or if I got my dream job. Too long didn't read, got ahead of myself, quit before getting an official job proposal, might be unemployed and homeless if everything goes bad. Edit, update in the comments. Check the label or's where you live. A friend once had a stipulation in a contract that he wouldn't receive his last two weeks of pay if he didn't fulfill a two weeks notice. He didn't give notice at all, and the employer followed the contract and kept his last paycheck of over $3,000. Here in West Virginia, that is illegal, and he ended up getting double the money owed to him after filing a complaint. Edit, corrected that it was his pay. I did this when a recruiter offered me a job before the company they recruited me for made a decision, spoiler, they did not decide on me. I put notice in at my job after the recruiter called me to formally offer the position and I accepted. Got paperwork for the drug test and everything. Friend who was working at the new company I was going to be starting at heard I got the job and mentioned how excited he was to work with me to the hiring manager and team lead who awkwardly told him that they hadn't made a decision on hiring anyone yet and had no idea what he was talking about. Friend reached out to me with that news, which caused me to call the recruiter back, who then panicked and sent me to talk to his boss. They tried pinning it all on me being an idiot, but thankfully I had shit in writing. Ended up blowing a gasket on the phone and having to slink back to my boss and the CFO of my current company to ask for my job back, after having played hardball with them the week previous trying to get leverage with the new job offer. Shit was awk. I don't know what country you're in, but if it's the USA, you don't have to give 60 days notice no matter what they tell you. It's just a common courtesy. It's not a law. So yeah you could have just held out for the offer letter before you said anything to your current job. But look at it this way, you were miserable there. No matter what, you're leaving. So now you have to make a decision that forces you to do something else day to day and you don't have to do that stressful job you hate anymore, you've taken the first step at changing your life. It was clumsy and it may end messily, but hey, 
You did it. I've never heard of 60 days notice. You don't have to give notice at all. You could just get up and go at 11.34 am without saying a word to anyone, never to be seen again. Update US, op. So, apparently, I got a response from the guy, and everything is okay, and I will start at the agreed day. But no proposal yet. Which leaves me only 50% less stressed.